Come on, talk to me. Good evening, everyone. If you're happy and you know it, let me hear you say amen. We are so grateful to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I want to uh, spend much of your time 
And I know your time is important, and I know you came for the word. Can I get an amen? I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity to preach this gospel. Thank God for this conference. Let's call on our Father. Let's pray. Father, the time has come. And your sons and daughters out of 8 billion people on this earth are under this tent. It's not an accident that we're here tonight. And God, I know that you have something special that you have for someone. We pray that you may be lifted up and you do that which only our almighty God can do all by himself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen again. Now come with me to our subject tonight. Let it fly. I'm going to be speaking on the subject, let it fly. And we are going to come from Revelation chapter 14. And there we are going to anchor our discourse in verse 6. And it reads this way. And then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. And this angel had a voice, and he said with a loud voice, it was not a whisper, it was meant to be heard everywhere and by everyone. And the angel said, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. Not only should you fear God, worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. And tonight I've come all this way, 27 hours in total, to fly down here to let somebody know that there is a gospel that's in flight. And this gospel, here it is, it is in the air for it to be seen. In other words, when the gospel is right, it is not a secretive thing, it is a public thing. When the gospel is right, it is not a secretive thing, it is a universal thing. In other words, it has to be anchored not by anything, but sustained by the content of it. And so tonight I've come just to remind you, it's our night to get to know each other. It's our night to get to appreciate the journey we got. There is a story that needs to be spoken of. The story is the gospel. And gospel simply means good news. And this everlasting news is to be preached everywhere. On the earth to every nation and every tribe and every tongue and every people. And I want to just pause right here because this is what Shawasha needs more than water, more than electricity, more than whatever it is that you think you need. We all need to interact with the gospel. When it's all said and done, our behavior, our thinking, the way we process things, the way we do things, the God's desire for you and for me is for us to have a life that is gospel-inspired. And in order for that to happen, somebody ought to tell the story. So there's someone who is in this city who is lost and they don't know it. And all they need is to catch a glimpse of the flying angel with the everlasting gospel. It's not that people need pity and compassion and what else we think they need. They don't need bread more than the gospel. For when you have the gospel, it will lead you to every need that you have. And heaven says, listen, I want you to start right here, pastor. Go and remind my people. That there is an everlasting gospel that must be preached to those on the earth. And I understand we are living in the last days where people no longer want to hear the right thing being preached. People, somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I wish in church all we did was sing. If singing was all, I will be okay. And that's why when you have a musical concert, you have more people. And yet God says, listen, I have an angel. Out of the many that I have, I'm sending one with one mission. God, what is it? And God says this, listen to me on this one. He says, well, there is a gospel to be preached. 
And somebody says, why preach it? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And Romans says, how can they believe in whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? So God is invested. As we preach the word, we have the support of heaven. Because it is God's desire that the gospel must be preached. And it must not be a tribal gospel. It must not be a nationalistic gospel. If it is true, it has to be universal in appeal and application. And if it takes an angel to preach it, it then means it must be important. The value of the messenger determines the importance of the contents. Not only that, it literally reveals the ownership of the one who sent the messenger. So I want to say to the church as we sit under this tent tonight, I want you to understand we are in the very heartbeat of God. Preaching the gospel, heaven is invested in the preaching of the gospel. When the gospel is preached, God has to show up. When the gospel is preached, the Holy Spirit has to walk among the people. When the gospel is preached, somebody needs to be saved. So as we go through this night, and you feel something moving on your heart, that's the Holy Spirit tagging on you. As we go through this night and you feel like I must change my mind, that's the gospel being used by God. When God wants to change people, he always sends good news. And then this angel had something to say. Let it fly. The angel says, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. You cannot have the gospel without fear of God. And you cannot have fear of God without giving glory to God. And you cannot have fear of God and glory to God without worship of God. In other words, I want you to understand as we journey together that the battle that we have is anchored on worship. The gospel on its own gives us cause to worship God. Worship is not the gospel, but the gospel causes us to worship God. In other words, you cannot worship him before you interact with the gospel. And someone says, Pastor, then what is the gospel? Well, John 3, 16 makes it plain and clear. For God so loved the word of everybody. The world that he what? Gave his what? Begotten son that whosoever what? Believes in him should not what? Perish but have what? Everlasting life. You got the gospel in a nutshell. So he is an angel that's flying in the midst of heaven. And he has the everlasting gospel. God is telling the world that I love you like crazy. Go tell somebody that God loves them. It don't matter how you feel about you. It don't matter how you think about you. And it don't matter how they talk about you. There is a God who thinks you're all that and much more. That's why he has to send messengers to come and let you know there is a place made for you. You may not feel good about you, but God feels good about you. And you don't feel good about you because of you, but you feel good about you because of who feels good about you, Lord and mercy. So when you are in the gospel, it is not about you. It's a story. The gospel is the story of God and how God loves you in spite of you. You are outside the story looking in and you fall in love with God because of how he loves you. <sighs> so God had sent an angel flying in the midst of heaven. And I've just come by here. Here it is. Many people don't know we like to sing it for children. Jesus loves me. This I know, 
But the older I get and the more I preach the gospel, that's my favorite hymn now. I've discovered I'm still his child. The gospel is just to lead you to a place where you sing the song to you and it makes sense to you. Jesus loves me. This I know whether I am in sin, whether I have done sin, whether I'm struggling with habits. Jesus loves me. This I know. And he does not love me because I'm good enough. Romans says, here he is. He demonstrated, 5 verse 8, he demonstrated his love toward us that whilst we were Let me say this to you. I've had a lot of people in my life who told me that they loved me. And I've told a lot of people that I loved them. But I discovered that you don't love anybody till you see their bad side. And the truth of the matter is many people fall in love with you as long as they see the good. Can, can I get a, someone to testify? You had a friend who loved you when all was well. The day they discovered there may be some witchcraft in you of hate of what everybody? Yeah, if you hate somebody, that's witchcraft right there. You don't have to, to, to go wherever you think they go. No, if it's in you, they just abandoned you. But here's what God does. God loves you at your worst. And he makes you imagine. How much more is going to love me when I do a little bit better? So God starts from the end. You fall in love with him because he has fallen in love with you when you are not even worthy to be loved. And then the Holy Spirit comes along and he says, imagine if you do a little bit better. So when God is telling you what to do, he's commanding you what to do, he is doing it and you will do it from the perspective of appreciating him. Here's what the gospel does. The gospel, the gospel makes you fall in love with God. So much so that you do everything with God because you are loved by God. In other words, you don't, follow, you don't follow God so that you are loved by God. But because you are loved by God, you follow God. So for many people, they say, Pastor, how can it be? How can I keep the Sabbath? How, how can I do all these things you are talking about? Here's the deal. If you fall in love with him enough, everything becomes easy because you are doing it out of love and not to be loved. All right, here's the question. You all look at me funny, but here it is. We're getting to learn each other. Anybody who married somebody that he didn't know the snow? Snoring. Anybody? All hands should be up because if you, how would you have known? Hello, somebody. Then he, after the wording, after the heart and the moon, you went home and you discovered first three years of marriage, it's, it's, it's romance. So even when it's bad, you, you, you have a nice story. And then after that romance, you get into reality. Reality means you can't sleep no more. Reality means you need to clean the plate so that they can sleep first before you get in. Reality means this is not working. I am not sleeping. But here is what makes you put up with it. It's because you loved first and then discovered snoring later. What God does, he starts with the snoring first. So when he says, I love you, you better believe it. He loves the good, the bad, the ugly. And what you know, what you don't know, God is already saying, don't worry about it. I got you. And the Bible says, this is what the first angel had to do. Preach the everlasting gospel to everybody that God loves you like crazy. So I've come by here. I want to remind everyone as we journey together that this God that we serve, he is in love with all of you. That, 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 that should make you feel like somebody. 
if the world knew this, there would be no one who suffers from low self-esteem. Because the one who knows you the best is the one who is saying, I love you the most. And then all who love you the least are the one who try to make you feel bad. All who love you the least are the ones who tell you you're not good enough because they are projecting their self-worth on you. And the one who knows you the most is the one who is saying you are all that. And he gathered the church together tonight to say, go and preach this gospel. It may look simple to you, but there's a child of God who is always questioning themselves. Am I worth it? Is there any value in me? And the only thing that makes it work is the gospel. Because at the center of it, there's a hanging son of God. And when you look at him naked on the cross... God is saying, this is how much I love you. Listen to me on this. this. This gospel story fires me up because we have lost the essence of it. When we worship God, when we want everybody, talk to me. When we want everybody, when we worship God, we, we thank God for Christ. Can I get an amen? When God is in love with you, now let me ask you, okay, let me see the hands of women who are married. All right. Let me see brothers who married the women. You married a wife. All right. When you went to marry your wife, there was a dowry that was to be paid. Can I get an amen? All right. Here's my question to you. What's more important, the dowry you paid or the wife you married? Brothers, how many of you say dowry? All right. How many of you say the wife? Very good. All right. Ladies, the man bought you a ring. Bought you a what? Some of you, I've noticed you're so rich. You've got every rock, changing rocks every year. Whatever you do, may the Lord bless you. What's more important, the ring or the man who bought the ring? All right. Those of you who say the ring. Let me see your hands. All right. Those of you who say the man. All right. So here is the kicker. Now when the man goes to pay the dowry, the woman is not cheap. So whatever he pays, the cost is less than the value. Whatever the dowry was, how many cows it was, it's not equivalent to the value. So watch this, as much as the cows are less important than the woman who received the cows, as much as the ring is less important than the man who gave the ring. Are you with me on this one? Listen to me carefully on this. From God's perspective looking at you, he gave his only begotten son because your value to him is greater than the cost. Yeah, let it sink a little bit. That's the everlasting gospel. God, the only thing he could use to get you was his son dying. When we look at God, we look at the price he paid and we worship him for loving us that much. So through Christ, we see how much he loves us. When we return the glance, we see through Christ how much he values us, he values us and through Christ it produces Produces the relevant, acceptable worship and fear and glory to God. Because if it were, not, if I was nobody, He would have never given His Son. He gave His Son because He sees more in me. Amen. So the everlasting gospel says, you cannot know Jesus and have low self-esteem. Your value is not in the size of your house. 
Your value is not in the size of the car you drive. Your value is not in the job you have or don't have. Your value is not based on how many people clap hands for you. Your value is not on the entourage that protects you. You're, you could be walking and barefooted and listen, you're behind exposed. God sees more in you because your value is based on him putting it on you. We are going to dance here. Because somebody needs to have Jesus in their lives. And let me tell you something. I like what it says there. It says, worship him. Worship what? Because when the everlasting gospel comes, it leads you to who to worship. When you understand the gospel, you don't struggle with, do I go to the mediums? Do I go? No, 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 no. When you know the gospel right, you will worship God. Nobody has to force you, tell you what to do. Your way of gratitude is thanking God for what he has done. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 150, verse 6, let everything that has what? Breath, praise ye the Lord. God does not say let those who come to church. God says if you're breathing in and out, if you knew the value I see in you, at least you have no issue with who I am and whose you are. Again, the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16 has this to say, with the gospel, and I just want to let someone know we're going to be talking and preaching the gospel this coming night, and I just want us to start right, start where we have to be, because we have made the gospel rules and behavior. Rules and what, everybody? It rules and behavior. We have made the story of God all about don'ts and do's. And yet the gospel at the center of it is a person called Jesus Christ. If you fall in love with him, everything that comes with him becomes easy to do. Becomes what? There are many of you wives who are here who have, well, wives and husbands, you know, you, you, there's a lot. I have discovered something as a married man that there's a lot of things you can do when you are in love. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Come on, talk to me. Some people may think you are dumb. Some people may think, you know, your wife cooked something and put extra. But when you are in love, there are some things. In fact, when you're in love, your life becomes about the one you love. You are not in love when you think about you more than you think about the one you love. When you are in love, you are just thinking, how can I bring a smile on her face? How can I? I mean, you, 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 you get happy making you happy. You, you get happy making him happy. Here it is, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. If we fall in love with him and the gospel is true good news to us, it is where he leads us, we will follow. What he tells us, we will do. Why? Because love lifted me. And Mark chapter 16 has this to say. Uh, we're about to wrap it up. It says, Jesus said to us, go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. Every creature and he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. In other words, Shawasha, the gospel has come. And the purpose of the gospel is for you to believe that God loves you like crazy. And if you believe that, God is saying, seal the deal with baptism. And he says, if you do that, you will be saved. In other words, God is on a mission to save someone. If you believe the gospel, and you believe the gospel enough for you to be baptized and follow his footsteps, it's not enough to say, I love him and keep it to yourself. You need to say something. I, I do a lot of uh, uh, marriage counseling. And one thing I've discovered is that there are a lot of people who are married to people that they did not want to marry. Because they did not tell the one they really wanted to marry that they loved them. So, they're trying to change the one they married into the one they never told. 
And the one who is married is trying very hard and confused why he doesn't like anything. Because he never told. The Bible puts it this way. You don't have because you don't ask. In other words, it's not enough to believe God and not tell him that you love him through baptism. At the end of this meeting, my prayer is that somebody is going to say, Jesus, I love you enough to step out of the crowd and lift my hand and accept you as my savior and get baptized into the church of God so that I am fully saved in him. Because the gospel is not just telling the story, but the gospel has a reason for the told story so that someone may fall in love with God. So here it is, Matthew 24, 14. You know it, it's the last one that I got. It says, listen, there are things that need to happen. The gospel must fly in the air. It must continue to go. Why? Because if it does not go forward, there is something that won't happen. 24 verse 14 reads this way. Of Matthew, Jesus says it well. And I love it. He said, and this one, gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And here it is. We're not just preaching empty, but God is a purposeful God. Anybody who knows that we serve an intentional God. God doesn't do things just to do things. God do, does things to accomplish things. So God says, go preach the gospel to all the earth. And here it is, when you preach it, let it be a what? A witness. Nobody should say, I never knew about it. Let everyone get a chance. Let them make up their minds. And here's what God says. Preach it. It is a witness. And then the end shall come. So I want to ask this question. If someone was to ask you, why are we still here? Why is it that we're still here? You ready? Because the gospel still needs to be preached. The only thing that will end the world is the preaching of the gospel. Not new politicians, not new governments, not new anything. The only, if we want to quicken the second return of Jesus Christ, we got to preach the gospel. Give everybody a chance to say yes to him. So tonight, I want to introduce to some. And I want to remind others that there is an everlasting gospel that's in the air. There is a story of a man who loved you enough to come down and became human. There is a God who loved you enough, even though he is from eternity to eternity. He was willing to become a baby, even though he was older than his mother. That's the gospel. He created his mother, and yet he was willing to be in the womb of his mother. He created the breast of his mother, and yet he was willing to be breastfed on the breast that he created so that he could be identified with you. There is a man who came down to the earth, and he walked on the dust roads of Jerusalem, and he was cursed, and people rejected him so that he would know how much he loves you. There is a man who is the bread of life, who got hungry at one moment, and the devil even tempted him because he was hungry even though he cannot hunger so that you would know that he loves you. There's a man who does not sit, sleep or slumber. His name is Jesus and yet he got tired and sat down at the well to let you know that listen, I get you. I understand you when it's not working and you are tired. I've been tired just like you and he did it just to show us. There's a man called Jesus who cannot die. He is the eternal eternal God, and yet he died. Let me ask you a question real quick. I'm finishing. Here it is. It, Jesus is God. Jesus is who? So when I ask you, I gave you an answer. Is Jesus God? Come on, talk to me. Is Jesus God? Yes. All right. Does God die? No. I've already given you the answer. Does God die? Is Jesus God? Did Jesus die? Is he God? Does God die? Did Jesus die? Some of you are wondering, where are you going with this? That's the gospel. It's not logical. You got to accept it by faith. 
He is fully God and he fully died and he cannot die. Some of you are so deep on things you should never be deep. All you got to do is, that's what the Bible says, whosoever believes. It's not an issue of explanation. It's not an issue of making sense and logical. Lord, I believe. I don't know. Your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my word. My thoughts. And here he was dead. Three days dead. In other words, he's saying, where can you go? And I've never been there. But tonight I just came in to say, listen, let's set the table because we are going to do some running. I want you to understand God loves you. When I'm discouraged in my life, I've learned, Pastor, here's my go-to. Jesus loves me. This I know. And I ask myself, is it because I feel it? No, the song says, for the Bible. Not my wife, not my pastor, not my friend. I don't need none of you to tell me, Jesus loves me. This, not I feel, but this, you got to know. And who told you so? The Bible. Because the Bible does not change based on the weather. So you're here tonight. And you want to say, God, I want to interact with the gospel. I want to figure out what is it you had on your mind when you created me. You want to say, God, what I'm hearing is the opposite sometimes of how I feel about myself. And you want to say tonight, I, I pastor and elders and church, I, I just want more. I want to hear more. The song said, what can wash away my sins? And I heard that nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I heard that the question was, what can make me whole again? And the answer was quickly followed, and it said, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow. And you are wondering, Lord have mercy, I need to understand this flow. I, I want to know how God can wash me. I want to understand how God can cleanse me. And I want to understand how I am supposed to respond to the love of the God who loves me so. So if you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, it's first night, but I want to commit my heart to the Lord. I want to discover what else the gospel has in store for me. If that's you, I'm going to ask you to please stand. And we are praying, Father, thank you so much for what you have done here tonight. We are grateful that the gospel was preached tonight. And we are thankful that you have supported and given it power, for that's what you do. So, God, I thank you for this brother of mine and the many others who are going to come. Thank you for the first fruit. For, God, we are expecting the whole city. We are here, God, expecting hundreds to come and say yes to you because the gospel story is a true story. The gospel story is a magnetic story. The gospel story lifts people up. The gospel story draws people to you. So, Master, we pray for us as we stand. Our desire is know more about Jesus and more to love about Jesus. And as we leave this tent tonight, Holy Spirit, walk with us and talk with us. Be in our dreams. Show us, whisper to us. Create a hunger and a thirst for the gospel like we have never heard before. God, give us grace and mercy with our friends and neighbors and co-workers and associates as we invite them to come. We pray that, Lord, you may feel up the tent with the hungry souls excited to be more because Jesus is doing his Jesus thing of saving men and women. Go with us as we go home and may your name be lifted up and may your people be blessed. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Give me the Bible star of kindness clean me to cheer the wanderer, Lord and tempest storms, no stone can hide the peaceful radiance beaming. Since Jesus came to seek and save the Lord, give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way, precept and promise, law and love combining. Till I shall vanish in eternal day Give me the Bible when my heart is broken When sin and grief have filled my soul with fear Give me the precious words by Jesus spoken Hold up
wasteland to show thy Savior need. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precepts and promise, no one love abiding. Till that shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, all oh, my steps enlighten. Teach me the danger of this realms below. That lamp of safety, all the gloom shall brighten. The light of Lord, the path of faith can show. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, low and love combining. Till that shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, lamp of life immortal. Hold up the splendor by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven's shining portal. Show me the glory regarding Jordan's way. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, low and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, low and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day.
Yeah.